Hey, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and guess what? I am sweating my tuchus off, but it's only minus three degrees outside. So you explain that one to me. Mostly it was because I was switching the tool of pink with all of the bolts and bolts of the new Ruby Star that we got here at the store. I don't know. But anyway, it's hot and steamy in here at Bernina of Naperville, which means that we are totally in the mood to make our next vintage boardwalk blocks. So this month we're making the hot dog stand, we're making a Volkswagen punch buggy orange, and we're doing some tickets. So let's have a look at what we need and how we put this thing together. <laughs> For this month, we're gonna be making a hot dog stand, the tickets, and the bug. And I've picked out, you know, I thought that these little surfer girls were perfect for um, the little VW bug, and you're gonna need, um, but you're gonna need a background. And don't forget that the instructions are in the vintage boardwalk pattern, but they're also in our additional handout because I tried to like break it apart so it makes it a little bit easy for, easier for you to know what to cut. But you're gonna need a little piece of vinyl from your embellishment kit. You're gonna need fabric for the car, the background, and then a piece of black for the tires. For the tickets, you're going to pull the green vinyl out of the embellishment kit, and then you're going to need a background piece for that. And at this point, we're, you also need to be able to reference the quilt in the book and what you've used with some of your pieces so that you are able to really... Um, you know, kind of make sure that you don't put two fabrics next to each other. So what I'm gonna do is in the handout this month, you're gonna see that you have like a little grid of the layout of the quilt. So you can kind of maybe make a little notation on there to know what you're using. And the hot dog stand, I have um, the background cut and I actually added a piece of material that's not in your kit just because we just got this art gallery fabric in and I love this clown fabric. So that's going to be the table part of my hot dog stand. You're also going to take your a little piece of your cording and I used some of my OESD expert tape there to tape that so it doesn't unravel. Then there's a little contrast piece that you need for the bottom of the umbrella here. So those are the things that you need for that in addition to stabilizer. And this month I'm going to be using medium terawatt stabilizer. And um, just because sometimes the embroidery is a little weird when you're trying to stitch over these little ropes or cords for the hot dog stand, you might consider using a little bit of aqua film or stitch 2O as a topper when you do the embroidery on this. So you're going to see that when we just start to stitch it out. So I've brought in the hot dog stand into my Bernina 880 Plus that I'm going to be using today. And I have OESD white bobbin fill in the bobbin threaded up for embroidery. And now I'm going to just be using a neutral color thread for my placement mark to lay the fabric for the hot dog stand in place. So the first color is this pink color, which is down here on the bottom of the screen there. And so it's gonna stitch that, and it has a little notch going up in the middle, and I've drawn a vertical line down our material. Then the next piece is gonna be basically the next steps. It's gonna sew the background piece on, and then it's got these little pieces coming next to sew our cord down. So that's gonna be a little bit tricky, but that's probably the trickiest part of this exercise. And before I put the hoop on here, I had sprayed my backing piece with 505, or the, the hoop part. And if you look here, as I line this up, I'm gonna just line that edge right up with my background piece so everything is nice and straight. And there we go. And now the next stitch is a basting stitch. So now I'm just going to let it do its thing. Now 
what's happening is there are going to be four different color changes here, 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 and here. But I'm just going to allow it to stitch to show me where to place our little cords and then once I know where those pieces are going to get stitched then I'm going to use expert water soluble tape pieces to tape it down into position. So for this example I've actually used this icon right there on my machine which is monochromatic so it's going to go ahead and stitch this without stopping. Now while this is stitching my last design, I'm going to go ahead and stop the monochromatic. Okay, now that those are there, I'm gonna go ahead and take some of my water-soluble expert tape and peel the paper off. And I'm gonna tape this into position just like that. And I'm gonna do this on all four sides. Okay. So now that we've done that, you can probably also see on here that I have like a little bit of bulky stuff here. I had taped this when I cut my cording out of the kit. So now I'm just gonna trim those bits off and I'm probably gonna rearrange this one just a little bit down here because I wanna make sure that I can also trim that one off a little bit. Okay, and if you wanna be super duper careful, you could also switch out your foot to the number 44. I love the number 44 when you're gliding over pieces like this, but remember, we have that topper. That's what we're gonna use here too. All right, so I sprayed the back of our topper with 505. I've also trimmed the extra cording pieces and now I'm just gonna line that up there just like that. All right, color number seven is a placement line. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch that. All right, and so now it's time to lay our red fabric down for our umbrella. And I'm gonna cover that, and then I'm also gonna use some expert tape to tape this down, or I could spray the backside with 505 spray. it's time for us to tack or do some placement lines for some white fabric that we're gonna add here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch again. All right, so now at this point, I'm gonna trim around the outside with my perfect scissors here, the Karen K. Buckley small scissors, and then I'll lay down the white piece, do stitching, and then I'll have to trim the white again. But I'm just gonna line this up here in place and let it stitch. Now I want to show you something. This can be a little scary because I have thread away on here. So what we want to do is turn thread away off. And let me show you how to do that. We go to our gears. 
we go into our embroidery settings and we touch this button right there and turn it off. That way the needle isn't going to do that disastrous thing that you're seeing right there. This way it, it will just go from one thing to the next. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, the fancy tools are great and then sometimes we have to know when to use them and when to lose them. See, otherwise it would have bounced back, then the foot gets stuck under there and it's a big catastrophe. Okay, so now it's time to trim again. Get out the scissors and I'll see you in a minute. All right, now that we got our white piece trimmed, it's time to do the placement stitch for our table. I'm just stopping this to make sure that the foot glides over. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna lay our clowns down into position and I want them to be centered on this table because I just think that this is hilarious. I'm gonna try my best to get them in there without cutting one off, having them straight. Oh, I just love it. And I'm using the non-water soluble tape to tape this into position. Only because I think that this regular tape is a little bit stronger than the water soluble tape. There we go. All right, I think we're good. Right, it's time to trim. Now, um, the pattern wants me to use red thread to applique the umbrella, but I really wanna use white. So I'm just changing my thread to white. You can do whatever you want. This is your quilt. And now, here we go. I wanted to talk a little bit about this hot dog stand. So one of the things I discovered on this one, because I used a fairly light fabric on this is I probably would have liked to have put a little bit of SF 101 or fusible woven on the back on, of this clown fabric. However, I still think it's pretty cute. And once again, I will have to do a little bit of trimming on this. Okay, so I've brought in the beetle. Now, you know, I used to have a beetle and it was lime green. I'm not gonna make this one lime green, but I just think that it's kind of funny. It was, it was super cute. Anyway, so this, um, 
design does not have like a little placement stitch or anything. So just like I do often, I'm gonna put the basting box around it. I'm gonna put my hoop on. And then as we go down here to the hoop, you can see my basting box there. So now when we look down here at the hoop, I have pre-sprayed it with 505 spray so I can lay my background fabric down. And I've got these little surfer girls that I'm using for my background. And I'm just placing this right in the middle of the hoop, just like so. And then this is gonna stitch my, my basting line into position. The next color is just gonna be to simply tell me where to put the fabric for the car. I wanted to make sure that the car is also going in that direction. You, you, you get me? Catch my drift there? All right, so now I know where to put my material. I'm going to lay it right on top of that car, and now I'm going to do color number three. All right, so now it's time to trim, and then there's gonna be a placement line for the tires. Okay, so all I did was went ahead and stitched color number four, which is the little placement line for the tires. So now I'm just gonna put the black piece on top, and it's gonna stitch the tires on. All right, so now I'm gonna trim the black and I've got white loaded up. So my next color is gonna be the windows fill stitch. So I'm just gonna trim and stitch that window down and then it'll be time for the vinyl. Okay, so now it's time to lay the vinyl down. So we're just gonna put that in place. And this is where I would grab some of my expert tape and tape this down. And then I'm gonna change my thread to a gray color and then we'll stitch it down. It's really important to tape the vinyl down. All right, ready to stitch this. vinyl's on and I just trimmed it so I'm going to clip the hoop back on the machine and now it's pretty easy. I'm just going to go through all of the different steps which is the um, surfboard that goes on top of the car, then there's the surfboard brackets and then there is all of the detailing on the car and then there's the cover stitching for the car which is like the satin stitch and then there is the little wheel hubcaps and then the bumper and the wheels, and then, uh, and then that's it. So um, I'm just gonna stitch this out and then this one is good to go. All right, I'm just putting the finishing touches on the little punch bug here. 
And uh, then we're gonna move on to the tickets and that one is super duper easy. Okay, so just like our other pieces, I have hooped up the stabilizer only. I sprayed it with some 505 and I'm going to select the basting box. So now I'm just gonna baste around this. And then the next color is actually gonna be the outline of where I'm gonna put my tickets on. So I'm gonna go ahead and let the machine stitch out that outline. Okay, so now it's time and I'm gonna get my expert tape out again because I wanna make sure that this vinyl doesn't wiggle around on me. And I think you're gonna really enjoy the blinding light that it gives off on the camera because it is super shiny. Look at that, fancy. Fancy stuff here, everybody, fancy. All right, so now we're gonna give it another stitch. And I'm using like a dark, almost black thread, but I think it works out really well for this particular um, color. Okay, so this is done. I'm gonna peel it off and then I'm gonna trim the vinyl away from the background. All right, so we have our little punch bug orange <laughs> little beetle and then the um, tickets are here now don't forget that I'm telling you to trim these all out once you have like your measurements and we've embroidered all of them so if you're trimming as you go that's fine but I'm not trimming trimming mine until the end once again I will have to do a little bit of trimming on this but we're done for this month okay so now I'm not hot anymore I'm cold. I don't know. I can't, I can't keep up with the Chicago weather, but anyway, all right. We only have about three more lessons in our vintage boardwalk quilt. So hopefully you're keeping up with us and don't forget in the uh, handout for this lesson, you are, I'm going to put together a little chart for you with the measurements so you can start in your mind processing how these blocks are going to be sewn together at the end. And, uh, I just can't wait to show you how to quilt it and put the embellishments on either. But next month, we're gonna be putting our pinwheels together. We're gonna to be cutting our additional kind of like setting blocks. And we're gonna be making another bicycle and some other stuff. I, there's just a few little things that, that you'll need to make. So until then, keep sewing along with us. And if you wanna see more tutorials and other stuff on our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel, Hey, please subscribe. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. <sighs> All right, let's try to get warm again.